Okay, so I'm quickly just going to go through some basic image processing in Astro Pixel Processor. So you can see here there's a lot of glow, um, and that's actually a bit of moon glow, mainly a bit of light pollution. I actually used an Elpro Max filter um, for this data, so that has cut down the amount of light pollution a fair bit, but the moon was quite close as well. So, first off, I am going to click Neutralize Background. You won't see much of a change, but it has done it. And now I'm going to click Remove Light Pollution. And it will say, do you want to remove light pollution and oil gradients in the current image in the image viewer? And it the answer is yes. So the interface will change and now you need to draw five, at least five regions of interest. So the way I do this is I find areas in the image where there's no nebulosity and I keep drawing lots of little boxes and I want to make sure that there's little or no stars in the box. Doesn't matter how big they are, um, but I tend to go smaller. Draw a few more. Try and get a representative sample of the light pollution or gradient. I'm avoiding this edge here because that's where you know we've got overlap from the stack. And then once you think you've got enough, I would actually do a few more, usually, but I'm trying to keep this video quite short. I'm going to click calculate. And you can see that is an instant improvement. And if you want to have a look at the light pollution model, you can just tap collect, uh, show correction model. And as you can see, that's a hell of a lot of uh, glow removed from that image. Go back to the normal image. And then I'm just going to click cut OK and save. So you will note it gives OPP gives huge file names. Um, this is what we're looking for. It's um, so LPC and CBG is background corrected and light pollution removed. And then we're just going to click OK and keep it as a fixed file for now. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of your list and go to other process one, that's the new image. And then that's how we want it loaded in. So I'm just going to calibrate the background again. So I'm going to click yes. And then I'm going to do exactly the same, except you need at least four boxes. So I'll just do it quickly. I try to go for areas where it's darkest and there's no stars and all nebulosity. Uh, isn't there's no sorry no nebulosity in each box. Now I'm going to click calculate.
you won't see much change but just click OK and save and therefore we've done two background corrections keep it as a fixed file again and then scroll down and go to your next next image this is what I like about APP it saves each step as a different file so if you do something wrong we don't like something you can go back to the previous and redo it basically. So now I'm going to calibrate the star colours. Yes. So now you need to do at least one selection box. I tend to avoid anything with like nebula in. Um, so I'm going to take that sample and I'm also going to take this sample. Uh, I might take this sample here and then I'm going to calculate. You can select different calibration modes here but I tend to find that adaptive black body and extinction is the best mode. Colour has changed, but also we have started to get a bit of colour in the stars. I'm going to click OK and save. So I'm now going to move on to HSL Selective Colour. <clears throat> this is a bit of an advanced tool, but I'm just going to do some basic tweaks in that first, um, and these will help any image. So I'm going to select 0 to 100% of range, and I'm going to click on Green. So this is going to affect all the green pixels now. And I'm going to take that green to magenta slider all the way to 1. And I'm going to take that saturation to minus 50%. Then I'm going to click calculate. Any tweaks you do in this mode are very, very subtle. Um, and you probably won't see them now. But you'll see them more when you start stretching, etc. A bit more. And then I'm just going to click apply. So the next colour I'm going to adjust is red, because the Royal Nebula is sort of a ready, pinky, orangey colour. And I'm going to just click background to 70%. But then I'm going to take that down to 40% so we're not saturating some of the brighter stars. And I'm going to bump up that saturation to 50, plus 50%. Click calculate. And we're going to keep it. And then finally I'm going to click all and I'm literally going to take it to naught to background and then I'm just going to increase it at 0 0.0052 so this is a sky background. I'm just going to increase that slightly above the background and I'm going to do saturation minus 50%. Maybe a little bit more. And what that is going to do is take away some of the chrominance noise. 
but you'll notice the image becomes very rough right <clears throat> and then to save, I'm going to click create. And then we're going to, once we've saved um, as normal, by pressing create, we're going to just click cancel. Process 4, which is our selected colour calibrated image. And then I'm just going to do an auto stretch. So the ones with the less uh, amount of sigma, that's a more aggressive stretch. So for example, 30% background or base and 2 sigma. It's quite, you know, over the top. For this data, I'm going to try 20% background, 3 signal, 2.5 base. That's a bit better. And then I'm just going to tick saturation. Start to get a bit more colour back in the nebula. So I'll we'll just zoom in a little bit. The core is very, very nearly blown out. You can still see a few stars just in there. I'm not going to tweak this stretch anymore. You can see that there is a slight amount of noise, but it's not a lot. I'm going to take this highlights and slide out all pretty high. Dump it down just a touch. Um, I'll just quickly mention this red box. Um, this is a font of knowledge and it tells you what all the sliders do with really helpful images. I spent quite a while sort of reading this and it, it actually really helped. So I suggest you actually read this as well. So the, the pictures, they probably, you know, hopefully I'm showing what each slider actually does. And I'm just going to bump up the saturation a little bit to 30. And then we'll see what effect it has. Because what I don't want is upping the saturation to inject noise into the, into the image as well. So it has injected a little bit, so I'm just going to bring that saturation threshold up just a touch. Just zoom back out again. And then I am going to have a look at some sharpening. I don't want to over sharpen it. So let me try that first. a little bit over sharpened so it's going to bring that back down touch
and that looks a little bit better now and I'm just going to bring up that project a little bit more So, for me there, well, you just sort of have to play with the sliders to taste, and I'm just thinking I might just stretch it just a touch more. So, this is the only sort of bit about APP that I don't like, it's these scales. Um, so, I tend to try and find it so that I can just alter them and just a touch. Maybe a little bit more. See, the sky background's come up a little bit more. Um, and then <clears throat> what I would do now is save the image and take it into Photoshop uh, to crop out these not very nice edges and um, maybe do a final bit of touch up if you know there's any dust spots but other than that um, I'd be quite happy with sharing this image with people online and I think APP once you get to grips with it it's very capable I'm not saying it's you know got everything that Pixinsight does but it allows you to get very good results very quickly and with less complexity. So once again, thanks for watching and um, I'll try and get some more videos up soon.